why Jesus had to meet Moses and Elijah, who were supposed to be long dead. The transfiguration of Jesus stands as one of the most remarkable events in the scriptures, representing the glorious transformation of his human body. This profound event occurred after Jesus had revealed his true identity to his disciples, taking them to the city of Caesarea Philippi, located about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee, they arrived at a place where a temple honoring the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus stood. It was at this significant location that Jesus asked his followers about the perceptions of people regarding his person, as recorded in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 50. Jesus asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They responded by sharing the various speculations among the people. Some believed Jesus to be John the Baptist resurrected, while others thought he might be the prophet Elijah or Jeremiah. Yet other thought he was one of the other illustrious prophets from the Old Testament. However, after hearing their answers, Jesus then posed a more personal and pointed question to his disciples, asking them directly, But what about you? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter then confidently declared, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. With that statement, he acknowledged Jesus' divine nature and messianic role, recognizing him as the long-awaited Savior, the Son of God. In response to Peter's words, Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Matthew 16, verses 16 to 18. Immediately after this profound exchange, Jesus announced something remarkable, an event so significant that not even the forces of darkness could stop it. From that moment on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples his mission. He would go to Jerusalem, endure suffering at the hands of religious authorities, be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. This revelation laid the foundation for the gospel message. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up a high mountain where he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as bright as light. Matthew 17, verse 1 to 2. In these events, we see the unfolding of God's plan for humanity. Peter's confession of faith led Jesus to affirm the establishment of his church, signifying a new covenant and a triumphant future. The transfiguration revealed Jesus' divine glory, foreshadowing his ultimate victory over sin and death through his sacrificial death and resurrection. These events form the bedrock of Christian faith, emphasizing the power of God's revelation and his redemptive work through His Son, Jesus Christ. Apart from the physical appearance of Jesus in the moment of transfiguration, the other extraordinary thing that happened at this event was the appearance of the long-departed Moses and Elijah engaging in conversation with Jesus. Their presence signified the continuity of God's plan throughout history, with Jesus fulfilling the role of the promised Messiah. It was a profound realization for the disciples as well as the confirmation of Jesus as the Christ, the long-awaited Savior. The conversation Moses and Elijah had with Jesus illustrates the cognitive understanding and communication of those who have passed away and now make up God's kingdom. They symbolize those who will be raptured without experiencing death, like Elijah, and those who will pass away and be with the Lord, like Moses. Together, they represent the entire Old Testament, with Moses embodying the law and Elijah representing the prophets. This extraordinary encounter of Moses, Elijah, and Jesus alongside the disciples signifies the unity of the Old and New Testaments revolving around Jesus. It is for this reason that Peter, realizing the profoundness of the moment, suggested erecting three shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Peter was still speaking when another extraordinary event happened. A bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud proclaimed, This is my Son, whom I love. With Him I am well pleased. Listen to Him. 
The disciples, overwhelmed by this divine revelation, fell face down to the ground, filled with both fear and reverence. This momentous event, recorded in Matthew 17, 4, 6, offers a glimpse of the future glory when Jesus returns to establish his eternal kingdom. It emphasizes the exalted position of Jesus as the Son of God and the fulfillment of both the Old and New Testaments. In his presence, all distinctions between the past and future converge, and all creation acknowledges his divine authority as the sovereign ruler. Jesus, aware of their fear, gently touched them and said, Get up, do not be afraid. As they looked up, they now saw only Jesus. This powerful encounter emphasized that Jesus is not merely one among many faithful servants of God or just a prophet. He is superior to them all. The ministries of Moses and Elijah, represented on the mountain, ultimately pointed to Christ, who is the central focus of all Scripture. As they descended the mountain, Jesus instructed the disciples not to tell anyone about the vision until after his resurrection from the dead. He did this because he knew that if the crowds heard about it, they might misunderstand and attempt to make him an earthly king instead of understanding his true mission as the risen king of the eternal kingdom. Still on their way back from the transfiguration, Jesus provided a major revelation. The disciples, curious about the prophecy of Elijah's coming, asked Jesus why the teachers of the law said that Elijah must come first. Jesus clarified that Elijah had already come, but he was not recognized. The disciples understood that Jesus was referring to John the Baptist, who came in the spirit and power of Elijah, as foretold in the Gospel of Luke, Luke 1, verse 17. The transfiguration serves as a profound moment affirming Jesus' divine nature, his role as the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies and the law, and the confirmation of his mission as the Savior and King. Moses and Elijah's presence further emphasizes the continuity and culmination of God's redemptive plan in the person of Jesus Christ. The transfiguration scene of Jesus represents a glimpse of his coming kingdom and its fullness. It is also a fulfillment what Jesus had previously told his disciples that some of them would witness the Son of Man coming in his kingdom before tasting death. Matthew 16, 28. The transfiguration serves as a powerful reminder of the promises of his kingdom and the hope that believers hold for an eternal future with him. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to support us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. Let us know what you think in the comments section. God bless you.